a number of issues left to address, one of them what to do about the property tax cap. As lawmakers consider whether to make the cap permanent, county leaders are calling on them to include permanent mandate relief. No surprise there. Joining me in the studio is Steve Aquario. He's the executive director of the New York State Association of Counties. Welcome back to Capitol tonight. Thank you. So um, permanent tax cap, yes or no? Sure, any emphasis on controlling property taxes is a good thing. So local government officials will fully support efforts to reduce property taxes, control, cap, anything you want to do with property taxes. They're too high in New York State, so what are we doing about them? Are we addressing the root cause of them, or are we just saying enough, don't raise them? So I think there's a lot that needs to go into this discussion uh, other than just saying let's cap them. Okay, the problem is that these that we actually heard from some folks last night who were talking about the circuit breaker and what happened to relief for middle class families or middle to lower income families. I mean, you uh, putting aside the circuit breaker, what I guess the point is that there's not a robust discussion happening about property tax relief. So there is a discussion about cap for rent laws, right? Because they happen to be connected. They've been connected since 2011. But there's no sort of full discussion about what else might be done, particularly since we're all racing to the finish. Well, right. I, but I think we have to be honest on this subject about property taxes and circuit breakers and low income or certain a narrow band of income taxpayers in this state. The state should give them an income tax credit. That is, after all, what we're talking about. We're not talking about controlling their property taxes. We're talking about giving them an income tax credit. So why doesn't the state just do it? Why are we talking about capping property taxes and forcing local governments to eliminate services when the state really wants to just give a narrow band of income taxpayers a credit? So if there is not mandate relief, and at this point uh, it doesn't look likely because we have so little time, and that's a pretty sticky subject, and we've discussed it many times on this show before, if there is not, then should the discussion move forward with the cap? Or are you saying no relief, no cap permanence? Well, in consultation with my president, Anthony Pacente, the Oneida County Executive, he reminds me that there was a promise, a commitment made by the state when they passed the property tax cap in 2012, that mandate relief, that corresponding state assistance would be provided to the counties so that they could stay under the property tax cap. Yesterday, the state Senate passed a law, or passed a bill in the state Senate that would address future unfunded mandates right. that they would not be able to do that to the local government. Like a pay-as-you-go bill. If a pay-as-you-go bill. Yep. So you have the the existing base mandates or base programs that the local governments, the counties have to pay for, and you have future ones. So both of them need to be addressed at once. I think when you look at the school vote, what happened to the school budgets recently across the state, most of them came under a tax cap. Most of them were passed by the voters of New York State. That's not the same situation with local governments. Well, most of the districts received a vast increase in state aid. I mean, the state aid for education was increased in this budget deal north of a billion dollars. Where are you in, in right. revenue sharing? You're flat, if I'm not mistaken, in terms of local governments and what you get from the state. Well, th that's it. That's it. That's it right there. The school districts received a billion dollars in extra state assistance. That same amount of relief for the counties. We don't get revenue sharing at the county government level. The local, the other local governments do. They get revenue sharing. But school districts received an extra $1 billion, and they deserved it. But so, too, do the local governments, the counties, who have to provide 911 veterans, home services, build roads and bridges, and provide quality of life programs. Yeah, and the counties are also under, or local governments generally, are under a lot of pressure to perform. I mean, the governor has sort of done a carrot and stick incentive sort mm -hmm. of a thing where he said to you you need to stay uh, you need to explain to me how you're going to save money by reducing your levy by one percent over a percent uh, a number of years it's three if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken in order for your residents to continue getting property tax relief in the form of a rebate check that's due like soon right around the corner if I'm not right. mistaken right so what do you have to do there well first of all local governments 
county governments don't need an incentive to stay under a certain threshold of property taxes. It goes with our job. It goes with our purpose when we become local elected officials. We loathe to raise property taxes. It's an absolute last resort, and we have not been raising property taxes for the past 10 years or so. It's been relatively flat, modest growth. The state put an incentive out there. If we uh, achieve 1% savings off of our 2014 tax levy, then our residents will receive a rebate in one form or another. Mm -hmm. So that is due this week. That is due Friday. And I suspect the vast majority of counties and local governments will submit either joint plans to the state of New York or uh, there'll be individual plans, but there'll be thousands of initiatives submitted. It's a good thing. I'm not going to quarrel with the governor on how uh, he's trying to address property taxes. At least he's trying to do something about it. Yeah, but what's the timeline there? I mean, you're talking about thousands of initiatives that will be submitted to the government that the government's going to have to sift through and say, okay, yes, these are in fact valid. These will in fact save money. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're in some way they're going to take your word for it, more or less. Yes. I mean, you have to implement these proposals and then see if they work. Right, as your well, plan. That's, that's correct. It, it is a certification process. So the local officials have to certify, the chief fiscal officer has to certify that these joint initiatives actually will save taxpayer uh, dollars of 1% over this various period of time. But it's, it's about the discussion, it's about property taxes, it's about shared services. I've seen some excellent initiatives that have come about because of this law. So there is a good side of it, a silver lining, if you will, about this property tax cap, and that is we have collected thousands of ideas, shared services that local governments, school districts have been doing all across the state. So what works on Long Island, what works around New York City, might be of interest to Western New York. What's going on in the southern tier might be of interest to the North Country. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to go through some of these examples and see what we can find to help each other. I do want to ask you also about something that we saw today. The governor toured a prison which of course is a state facility and not a local facility in terms of incarceration. And he talked about Raise the Age, which is his juvenile justice proposal. Mm -hmm. And we've heard about that this evening. My Last I checked, you were opposed to his Raise the Age proposal. Are you still opposed? Well, in the county family, if you will, there are several agencies from dis district attorneys who prosecute to public defenders who defend to probation departments uh, who help adjudicate these claims or adjust these incidents. Uh, we have social services departments involved with this and sheriffs who transport these minors back and forth. So we have a very diverse and the office of the county attorney involved in this. So we have a very diverse constituency mm -hmm. that's involved with this program. It's not that they were opposed to raising the age, but we, we hear both sides of this. The district attorneys tell us that in many instances the current law is better for the minor because they take that into consideration when they're presenting charges. So we've heard it both ways from the district attorneys to the public defenders to the probation uh, folks that are involved with this and the Office of Court Administration, the chief judge very involved in this issue. So I think as we go through the next 10 days, this is an issue that's very important to county government as there's so many of our agencies involved. So uh, just just to be clear, though, you're, you are opposed to what the governor is saying in terms of raising the age of criminality. We have objections what does to that what mean? the state is saying. All right, what does that mean? The state is saying that they will pay, as they should, for a new program that they want to implement. But in this particular instance, it's the county governments, the local governments, re remind everybody here that we are subject to the property tax cap. Right. So we can only spend X amount of dollars if the state comes up with a new idea and we have to upfront that expenditure that could cause pressure on the property tax cap so we have suggested to the state that they create an escrow that they could set aside they could use the surplus monies that are existing right now outside of the budget process that is available is a billion dollars that's available they should set aside a fund of money so that the counties don't have to upfront this money yeah, the billion dollars that you're speaking of, I mean, remember, during the budget process, we were talking about the five billion dollars that came through the financial settlements, the windfall, if you will, mm -hmm. that was realized by the Attorney General's office, but more by the Department of Financial Services. They fought a lot about this. Should it go to infrastructure? Should it go to mandate relief? Should it go whatever it was? Now you're suggesting something for another billion dollars that has come in since the budget was already agreed to. And so there's been other settlements subsequently, and that money is now the pot has grown and the discussion we haven't actually had a discussion about what's going to happen to that money 
That's right. I think we have a right to know what the state is going to do with this $1.2 billion. I think it should go to local governments. A piece of it should go to local governments for one-shot purposes or in this particular situation that we're talking about, set aside for uh, uh, raise the age impact at the local level, a very important public policy issue. We are one of the remaining states that treats uh, 16 and 17 year olds as if they're adults. One of two, I believe. One of two. So I think it should be addressed, but I think we should be smart about this, mindful of the impact at the local level, and proceed very cautiously here. Okay, well, thank you very much, Steve Aquario, for your time as always. And we're out of time at this moment, so we have to move on.